Welcome to PJ Bible TV. Today, we're addressing a heartfelt question that many of us face. What happens to our beloved pets when they pass away? For countless individuals, pets are not merely animals. They are treasured members of our families, offering companionship, love, and endless joy. When these cherished companions leave us, it naturally stirs deep and profound questions. Do our pets, like dogs, cats, and others, go to heaven? What guidance does the Bible offer regarding animals and the afterlife? In this video, we will explore these meaningful questions through a biblical lens, uncovering what Scripture tells us about creation, God's love for all living creatures, and whether we may be reunited with our pets in heaven. Whether you're a devoted pet owner, an animal enthusiast, or just curious about the biblical perspective on this topic, our discussion today is certain to provide comfort and insight. Before we delve into this topic, I encourage you to subscribe to PJ Bible TV if you haven't done so already. By subscribing, you'll be notified whenever we post new videos. Don't forget to hit the like button and share your reflections in the comments below. Your participation helps us reach more people. And if this video resonates with you, feel free to share it with your church group, family, and friends so they too can find comfort and understanding through God's Word. God created all living creatures with purpose, including animals. In the creation story found in the book of Genesis, we read that on the fifth day, God created the sea creatures and birds, and on the sixth day, He made all land animals alongside humans. God declared each of His creations as good. The fact that animals and humans were created on the same day may indicate a special connection between us and the animals that inhabit our world. Although we cannot be certain, it seems reasonable to believe that God intended for humans to care for and live in harmony with animals. They are indeed a gift and a responsibility, though they are not seen as equals to humans in God's eyes. A comforting thought comes from the late Reverend Billy Graham, who once reflected on whether pets would join us in heaven. He believed that God, in His perfect love and wisdom, would provide everything necessary for our happiness in heaven, if having a beloved pet there would bring us joy. Graham felt confident that God would allow it. While the Bible doesn't specifically mention pets like dogs or cats, it does speak about animals in the context of the new heaven and the new earth. For instance, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6 speaks of a time when the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat, illustrating a future where animals live in peace and harmony. Verses like these, as well as others like Isaiah 65, 25, portray a world where animals coexist peacefully, hinting that they may be a part of our eternal experience in heaven. As we explore what the Bible says about heaven, one thing becomes clear. It will be far more wonderful than anything we can imagine. Animals, with the joy and love they bring to our lives, could very well be part of that heavenly experience. However, whether or not our specific pets will be there is something we may not fully understand until we ourselves reach heaven. Throughout Scripture, there are many references to beautiful cities, but none compare to the one believers long for, the New Jerusalem, a holy city where God will dwell among His people. This is not a symbolic or metaphorical city, but a real, physical place. It is the eternal home believers will inhabit in their resurrected bodies. The longing for this city has existed since the time of Abraham. As Hebrews 11 tells us, Abraham looked forward to a city whose architect and builder is God. The Hebrew Christians were reminded in Hebrews 12 that they would come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God known as the heavenly Jerusalem. Paul also mentions this city in his letter to the Galatians, calling it the Jerusalem above. In Revelation 3.12, it is referred to as the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. This holy city is described in Revelation 21.2 as descending from heaven, prepared as a bride beautifully adorned for her husband. The new Jerusalem's arrival from heaven suggests that it has already been prepared by God. John, the author of Revelation, does not describe the city being built. Instead, he sees it descending from heaven, fully formed. Since God dwells in the third heaven, we can conclude that this city is currently under construction, intended to be the capital of heaven and the final dwelling place for His children. 
Revelation 3, 12 offers another glimpse of this magnificent city. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven, and my own new name. Try to imagine this awe-inspiring city. One day, it will descend from heaven to the earth. During the millennial reign of Christ, it will hover over the earth, and in the eternal state, it will rest upon the new earth, becoming the most glorious city ever conceived. This is the place Jesus referred to when he told his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. John 14, 2-3. Right now, Jesus is actively preparing this dwelling place, often described as a mansion. Regardless of what we choose to call it, this heavenly home is part of God's grand plan. When it is complete and the appointed time arrives, we will enter through its pearly gates, reminded that we are there only because of Christ's sacrifice, which secured our redemption. The Bible provides glimpses of the beauty and grandeur of this city, its foundations are described as being made of precious stones. For those hoping to be reunited with their beloved pets in the afterlife, there is reason for comfort in the words of Revelation chapter 5, verse 13. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in the sea, and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. There are also several passages suggesting that animals may possess souls. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 18 to 21 offer thought-provoking insight. I said in my heart with regard to the children of man that God is testing them, that they may see that they themselves are but beasts. For what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beasts is the same as one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same breath and man has no advantage over the beasts, for all is vanity. All go to one place. This passage reveals a profound truth. Both humans and animals share the same breath of life and return to the earth when they die. While humans bear the image of God and are called to a higher purpose, the connection between all living creatures is undeniable. This invites us to consider the possibility that, just as animals were part of God's original creation, they might also have a role in his eternal kingdom. All living beings, including humans and animals, come from dust, and to dust, they return. But the question remains, who knows if the spirit of man ascends while the spirit of the animal returns to the earth? Ecclesiastes 3, verse 21. This mystery leaves room for reflection about the relationship between humanity and creation. Romans chapter 8, verses 19 to 21, add depth to this thought, revealing that creation itself is eagerly waiting for the fulfillment of God's plan through the revelation of his children. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. This passage suggests that animals, along with the rest of creation, are included in God's redemptive plan, eagerly awaiting the day when all things will be restored. Although the Bible does not give us definitive answers about the fate of our pets, it assures us that heaven will be more glorious than anything we can imagine, filled with peace, joy, and the presence of God. Whether or not our pets will join us in heaven, we can trust that we will be completely fulfilled in God's presence. The Bible emphasizes creation's eager anticipation for liberation from the effects of sin, just as believers look forward to their redemption. Romans 8 paints a picture of hope, of a world released from corruption to share in the glory prepared for the children of God. Psalm 36 verse 6 further reflects God's care for all creatures. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. 
This verse highlights God's compassion, not just for humanity but for all living beings, suggesting that animals are part of His divine plan. The Bible often emphasizes that God's covenant extends to every part of creation. In Psalm 50 verses 10 to 11, God declares His ownership over all animals, saying, For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the creatures that move in the fields belong to me. This declaration underscores God's sovereignty over the natural world. In Hosea chapter 2 verse 18, the prophet speaks of a future time of peace, when God will establish a covenant with the animals. I will make for them a covenant on that day with the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the creeping things of the ground, and I will abolish the bow, the sword, and war from the land, so that all may lie down in safety. This prophecy paints a vision of harmony between animals and humans, foreshadowing a future world where all creatures live in peace. The scriptures also emphasize the role of animals in praising God. Psalm 150 verse 6 calls on everything that has breath to praise the Lord, and Psalm 69 verse 34 urges the heavens, the seas, and all their inhabitants to join in worship. Job chapter 12 verses 7 to 10 invites believers to learn from the natural world. Ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds of the air, and they will tell you, In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. These passages reveal that God's creation reflects his glory and wisdom, inspiring us to praise him. Throughout history, Christian leaders have also reflected on the role of animals in God's plan. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, believed that the suffering brought upon the world by human sin extended to animals. Wesley looked forward to the restoration of creation, where animals would once again reflect their original beauty and peace. Similarly, Martin Luther, the founder of the Lutheran Church, taught that the perfect harmony between humans and animals in paradise would one day be restored when Christ returns to renew creation. In his book Heaven, author Randy Alcorn suggests that animals, ranging from horses and dolphins to cats, dogs, and even squirrels, may share in the benefits of Christ's redemption. Alcorn reasons that if God created these animals and declared them good, it is reasonable to believe that they could be part of the new earth, restored to their intended purpose in God's perfect kingdom. The Bible affirms the inherent value of animals, declaring that they were created by God and found to be good, Genesis 1, 25. It is possible that animals will inhabit the new earth as described in Revelation 21, 1. However, it is not for us to decide which animals will be part of the new creation. God, in His perfect wisdom, makes these decisions, and we can trust His judgment. While Scripture does not explicitly state whether animals or pets have souls or whether they will be in heaven, it provides insights that spark thoughtful reflection. Both animals and humans are described as having the breath of life, Genesis 2, 7, 1, 30, 6, 17, 7, 15, and 22 indicating that they are living beings. The distinction lies in the fact that humans are made in the image of God, Genesis 1, 26 to 27, granting them a unique spiritual nature with the capacity for thought, emotion, and moral choice. Humans possess souls that continue beyond death, but if animals have souls or spirits, they are likely different and do not extend into eternity in the same way. Even so, Animals are part of God's creation and have a role in His grand design. Genesis 1, 25 highlights that God created animals and found them to be good. This offers hope that animals could be part of the new earth, living alongside humanity in perfect harmony. Though we may envision our pets in heaven, it is not for us to determine which animals will be included. God's wisdom will guide these decisions, and we can rest in the assurance that His plan is perfect. In passages like Isaiah 11, 6, and 65, 25, we find hints that animals will exist in the future kingdom. While we may not know whether these animals will be the same ones we knew and loved on earth, we can trust in God's perfect justice. When we reach heaven, we will be at peace with His decisions, whatever they may be. Pets are common companions in many homes today, from beloved dogs and cats to exotic pets like albino pythons or hissing cockroaches. Although the Bible doesn't directly address keeping pets, 
we can gather insights from other scriptural stories. One such example is Nathan's parable of the poor man and his cherished lamb, found in 2 Samuel 12, 3. This story illustrates the deep bond that can form between humans and animals, showing us that such affection aligns with God's care for all living creatures. Since we're made in the image of God, Genesis 1, 27, we reflect his nurturing nature, including our desire to care for animals. From the beginning, God blessed humanity and instructed us to fill the earth, subdue it, and rule over the fish, birds, and all living creatures, Genesis 1, 28. When children care for pets, they learn to mirror God's love by creating a safe and loving environment for these animals, just as God cares for all of creation. Bringing a pet into the home is a significant responsibility, reflecting the Creator's love and stewardship. Many parents introduce pets to teach their children responsibility and other core values, principles that align with the teachings of the Bible. Beyond that, pets offer companionship joy, and unconditional love. This is why therapy animals are often brought into hospitals and nursing homes to provide comfort and brighten lives. Animals that help us express kindness and love are truly blessings from God. The Bible provides breathtaking imagery of heaven, offering us a glimpse into the beauty of the New Jerusalem. Revelation 21, 18 to 21 describes the walls of the New Jerusalem as being made of jasper, while the city itself is pure gold, clear as glass. The twelve gates are each made from a single pearl, and the streets are paved with pure gold as transparent as glass. This city reflects the light of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Isaiah 60, 19 foretells that the sun and moon will no longer be needed, for the Lord himself will be the eternal light. In 1 Corinthians 2-9, Paul reminds us that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. The glory and beauty of heaven will far exceed anything we can imagine. And in that perfect place, we will experience the fullness of God's presence, love, and light. As we reflect on what the Bible says about animals and pets, we can find peace in the assurance that heaven will be filled with joy, peace, and fulfillment in God's presence. Whether or not our pets will join us, there is something we can only know when we arrive. However, we can trust that God, in His infinite love and wisdom, will provide everything we need to experience perfect joy in His presence. Thank you for joining us today on PJ Bible TV for this heartfelt discussion. If you found this video helpful or comforting, please give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with future videos that explore the richness of God's Word. If this message touched your heart, please share it with your church group family and friends. Together, let's spread the hope and truth of the Bible with everyone we know. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you in His perfect peace.